We are off to another mystery activity. I have no idea what it is. I feel like it might be something to do with a prison, but uh, we'll see. Reed's not telling me anything, so I'm about to find out. I'm not sure if I can take my camera in wherever we're going, but I'll give you an update once I know. So we've just arrived at my next surprise activity and it's an asylum ghost tour. So I'm actually so excited for this. It's going to be spooky and it's going to be surreal because everything that they're going to talk about actually happened around here. So, yep. I'm not sure if we're allowed to film in there, but I'll definitely talk about it. So, I'm so excited. Yeah, I mean, what else can you be doing at nine o'clock on uh, Wednesday night? We weren't allowed to film in there. We could only take pictures. So I've got a few photos at least. They have lots of creepy stuff in the entry, like a weird doll, kind of like Annabelle, where it says positively do not open and things like that. <laughs> the tour guide was wearing an old fashioned black and red dress, but she said that if women wore red, that was one of the reasons for being admitted into the mental asylum. So probably wasn't the best wardrobe decision on her part. She told us some pretty spooky stories that uh, you may or may not believe. <laughs> one of the stories was about one of the tours she ran through there and she was in the section where they held a lot of bad men that did pretty bad things. So there was a small group of teenage girls standing in the corner and she could see a tall, dark figure standing right behind them. And she said she felt very, very uncomfortable, could feel his evil presence and told the girls to move away. The lady told us that one girl took three pictures in a row. The first picture was fine. The second picture had a dark figure in it and the third picture it was gone again. She told us some pretty spooky stories. Uh, there was another spooky story of a little girl in a white dress in the doorway singing. I like to think that it's one of those things that if you just ignore it, it'll be fine. Just don't go prodding around and do it. Yeah, well, a lot of people who are religious, if you believe in God, you also have to believe in the other side of things as well. So that's where it gets a little bit creepy. A lot of the people that got put into the Institute, like some of the rules were based on biblical terms as well. So there was certain parts of the Bible that if you did something that was against what the Bible had said, that was a reason enough to put you into a mental institution. Yeah, and one of those things was cleaning on a Sunday. If you cleaned your house or did the housework on a Sunday, you'd get admitted into the mental asylum. Or another one was if you fell off a horse and got a concussion because they didn't know back then what a concussion was and they thought, oh, you've gone crazy. That's it, into the mental asylum you go. And there was stuff like arguing with your husband. Even under that, there was one that was dumb. I think one of them was like womanly problems and, and any mental thing like anxiety and like, oh, she's a bit anxious about this test coming up or she's a bit anxious about this in the institution you go. There was actually a three-year-old girl admitted into the mental asylum, possibly because she had Down syndrome and obviously they had no idea what that was. The lady did make a, she made it a very interesting experience and she took us into this old laundry room where they used to do the ironing and she was telling us about these two women there that did not get along and one of them decided to biff the other one over the head with an iron. It took six months to get her back to being okay and then the first day she came back she had a heart attack and died right on the floor. 
Yeah. And then she pointed right to where Ree's feet were. And Ree's like, well, that would have been good to know before I stood here. The lady, she was saying that it's not uncommon to hear voices or singing or footsteps. I didn't hear anything. (laughs) All I could hear is like a low hum because of, I don't know, a breeze or just, it's an old building. You hear like a low hum. She took us to the cellar down the stairs and it was dark because we were there at night and it was already dark enough, but she turned off all the lights and made everyone turn off their lanterns and she just made us all stand there in a circle in the dark, just silently in pitch black. It wasn't a jump scare kind of tour either. They're like, we don't do tacky jump scares. It was just a historical tour with some spooky stories in a spooky building at a spooky time of day. (laughs) So the atmosphere was enough to sort of keep you interested and even just sort of contemplating like, wow, did that really go on? And, oh, you know, these stories true. Yeah, they said they don't do the jump scares there because it's really dangerous. And she said that sometimes when people get scared, their first response is to swing. And that can get pretty dangerous. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what I'd do if I got scared. I'd probably just suck. The actual grounds the asylum is on, yeah, the government doesn't own any of it. Like, people own different sections of it. And there's actually two people that run the tour actually live on the grounds there because we saw a couple of houses. And I don't know how they sleep at night knowing everything that went on there. <laughs> Even if you don't believe in ghosts, bad things did happen at those places. Yeah, but there was a little place uh, for sale in the asylum if you wanted to buy that and maybe even live there. You don't have to do the ghost tour. They do offer lots of other tours. So they have like a paranormal investigation one, I think, which is where they go through and use different gear and stuff to try to find ghosts, which would be interesting. We're going to do the escape room over there now. So that's going to be fun. I don't think we can film in there either, but we'll probably talk about that. The Mayday escape rooms were also at the asylum. Yeah, it was pretty much as soon as you walked in, you had 60 minutes to figure out how to escape. We ended up making it out with about six minutes to go, so we were pretty close, but we made it. It was just the two of us, so we've never done an escape room with just the two of us before. So yeah, we had an hour to figure out how to escape. It was really fun. I won't give away too many spoilers in case anyone who happens to be watching actually wants to do this themselves. It was quite tricky at times. So you gotta go in there with a bit of an open mind and think, all right, what could this be? Yeah, and the good thing about the escape room there at the asylum was that they didn't make it too scary or gory so it was quite a family friendly escape room. The most interesting part about that night were the stories that we were told after we came out of the escape room by the people that worked there. They did tell us that they've had their own sort of paranormal experiences whilst working there and they did take a while to actually admit this to us. They actually hesitated to tell us. They sort of looked at each other and said, oh, we don't know if you really believe in this sort of thing, but we were like, well, we're all ears. They didn't want to deter anyone and they've just opened it as an Airbnb, some of the rooms as well. So I guess the last thing you'd want to hear is a spooky story (laughs) before you stay the night there. They're like, oh, next time you come here, you could stay here at the asylum. That was after they told us about their paranormal experiences. One of the guys that works there, he was walking up to the escape room to organize everything. He said that when he entered the escape room, there was a man wearing a brown coat. And he thought it was very weird because there's no way he could have gotten in there because it was locked. So he was looking around thinking, how the heck did you get in here? And then by the time he looked back, he was gone. And he was really spooked by this because there was no other way he could have gone other than the way he came in, which was where he was standing. 
And he said that when he left the building, there was a, another person outside who said, did you see the man in the brown coat? Apparently he has seen the man in the brown coat several times since then. He said it was about once a month and it's usually only in the mornings and when he's alone. He also told us about an experience they had during a paranormal investigation. He felt something that was similar to a hot iron on his back. So he got the other person who works there to check his back and he said that there was a red sort of handprint and a big scratch on his back. He said he was really shaken up about that and he couldn't go anywhere there alone for a while. He was pretty hesitant to tell the story, so you could tell that he really believed in it. If you're interested in checking out this escape room, I'll put the link down below. And they're actually making another escape room. They gave us a little sneak peek, but it's going to be a sort of butcher shop vibe. Yeah, so they're basing it in the actual meat locker. It's going to incorporate the old fridge and freezer rooms, which still have working doors. Obviously, they've removed the hooks, but you can still see the tracks that run across the roof. It's actually got a really eerie vibe in there. Another thing I wanted to say was the noise that I heard in the asylum during the ghost tour, the deep hum that I mentioned. I mentioned it to these guys who worked at the escape room and they said they've heard it too. They think it's just a leak in the plumbing somewhere because when they checked out the pipes, they could actually feel a rumble. Another thing I wanted to add was they mentioned that it was very difficult to actually figure out a storyline or a scenario to actually base the escape rooms off. There's a lot of people who had relatives that were in the asylum and they don't want to offend them or upset anyone because a lot of those people were actually wrongly admitted. So with the ghost tour, they were doing it in a more historical way rather than to scare people. And I could tell the difference because I've been to the ghost tour at Ararat, which is at the old Aradale Asylum. And I went and did that with my family and that was pretty spooky. And my brother got jump scared at around a door. And yeah, this was not like anything like that. It was just more fact than sort of mayhem. They have done this ghost tour in a way that's more factual. They tell us their own paranormal experiences. Whether or not you believe in that stuff is up to you. I'm really not sure where I sit with it, but these people are adamant that it's happened to them. So I'm just going to say, well, that's your truth. That's fine. That brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching if you've stayed for this entire time. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week.